Can you imagine a time when fear ruled the streets of a quiet English county? This was the reality for the people of Yorkshire in the late 1970s, as they found themselves in the grip of a ruthless predator. Peter Sutcliffe, later to be known as the Yorkshire Ripper, began a chilling spree of violence that would forever mark him as one of history's most notorious serial killers. Over the course of five harrowing years, Sutcliffe systematically targeted and murdered 13 innocent women, each crime escalating the terror that held the community in its icy grip. Patterns began to emerge in his horrifying acts as the streets of Yorkshire became a hunting ground for a faceless menace. As the body count rose, so did the pressure on law enforcement to stop the terror. The hunt for the Yorkshire Ripper was on, but who was he really? The investigation, a gruelling desperate race against the clock, was marked by immense challenges. The police were grappling with the chilling reality of a serial killer on the loose. As the net tightened, detectives employed a variety of methods, from extensive door-to-door -door inquiries to sophisticated forensic techniques. The turning point came when an overlooked piece of evidence, a tire imprint, was re-examined. This seemingly insignificant clue became the linchpin in the case, leading detectives on a path straight to Sutcliffe. This was a testament to the untiring efforts of the police and forensic teams, who sifted through thousands of potential leads and painstakingly pieced together the puzzle. This was no small feat in an era before DNA testing and digital databases. The relentless pursuit of justice finally paid off when the Yorkshire Ripper was apprehended. The day of reckoning had arrived. But what did this mean for the victims and their families? The capture of Peter Sutcliffe, the infamous Yorkshire Ripper, came as a relief to a community held hostage by fear. The man whose ruthless crimes had gripped Yorkshire was finally in custody. For the families of the victims, this was a moment of mixed emotions, relief, despair, and a longing for justice. The courtroom was the stage for a drama that would seal Sutcliffe's fate. As the evidence mounted forensic breakthroughs, the patterns in his crimes, the picture became clear. Sutcliffe was found guilty, sentenced to life imprisonment, his reign of terror finally brought to an end. Yet the aftermath of Sutcliffe's crimes had a profound and lasting impact on Yorkshire. The community, once paralyzed by fear, had to find a way to heal, to remember the victims, and to move forward. Law enforcement, too, was forever changed. The investigation into Sutcliffe's crimes led to significant improvements in police methods, particularly in forensics and criminal profiling. Society's attitudes towards such heinous acts also evolved, sparking debates on victim blaming and the need for better protection for women. While Sutcliffe is now behind bars, the scars left on Yorkshire and its residents endure.